Babe, wake up. Ecom Legend just dropped a new vlog. This ain't chatter, this is key. If you want to scale harder with your ecom business, there's a few things you can do which are very simple. You can even do today that can even double your revenue in the next 30 days. Yes, uh, the, for the sizing, what we usually do is, for example, see here, you know, we are getting Asian sizes, right? Yeah. Medium to sweet. Welcome to this channel. My name is Farah Kilkan, 27 years old. And me and my brother, together, we've done over 20 million in revenue with e-com in the last half a decade, five years, obviously. And I'm about to show you in this video how our company's wallet like looks like and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis in order to scale my businesses. And yes, awesome view, as always, right? Now, before we head into it, let me show you exactly how our company looks like right now. You can see here, for example, Astrosphere Dropship Project. It's like the CEOs, Farouk and Fatih, active members. You can see that I'm the active member, but I indulge only when necessary. That's how it goes right now. And my brother is the guy who's like more overviewing everything at the moment. This is kind of how our company looks like right now. And I'm going to go into detail because in here we have, for example, the supplier and then like our connected stores. You can see we have six stores right now. Maybe we will open some more stores right now. Uh, the highest I ever did in one day revenue is like 82k euros in a day, which is like almost 90k dollars in a day. 20% revenue, you do the math how much we did. Now we go to the operations. I blurred the names, by the way, of the people and I did it on purpose because I don't think they will like it if they see if they, if they, if they see their names online, maybe, you know. Yes. Supplier coordinator, stock keeping, overviews and fully responsible for operations work, communicate with the backend team solve product related issues, maintains team and work related sheets, documents, creatives edit, creatives editor when required, integration of the new team members and creating SOPs. So under the manager, obviously we also have a store developer. And then we have the operations VA, which is basically the VA of the manager in here. She does like a lot of tasks for her. And then operations VA, we have another one as well. And what operations VA is just in simple words do, um, our product researcher finds products, right? She puts it in a sheet and then the two operation VAs, what they do is they look at all the products and they import them into the Shopify store. And now obviously for Facebook, right? You can see the media buyer is my brother. Well, my brother is, of course, he's checking the ads every now and then, but we have a media bar ourselves. We had actually, but we fired it a few days ago. <laughs> That's why my brother is here right now. So we have the Facebook VA, does the ads launching, Facebook comments, ads checking, checks the ad spend and is maintaining the pages to make sure it's running like well. Then we have a finance guy, obviously full time, just basically responsible for all the financial um, matters and shit, you know, just making sure we can see all the profits and you name it. This is very important. There's like people, they do like 5K, 10K a day. And when I ask them what their profit is, they say, yeah, I do like 20% profit. My question is, what's your real profit of your refunds and everything? That's what I want to know. Because revenue is not profit. I always say revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, exit is jackpot. And for those who didn't know, yeah, you can even exit dropshipping stores. If you want to have as well the contact that can as well help you, just put here a comment on this video and say exit. I will send it over to you. So of course the backend, which is one of the most important parts well in the business, obviously, is we have a CS manager. Managers are working on the customer support platforms used by us. We're using Freshdesk, by the way. Dispute management of Klarna, PayPal, and credit card. Refund management, hiring new CRM agents, and managing all CS related reports. Obviously, you will see in here that we have only three people, which is not true because we have like the manager and then the two VAs under that. There's like one VA who's like kind of like the right hand of our manager and the other one is just only answering all the emails and stuff. But what I can say is that the nice thing about this is that like our manager is like an office in India. And what happens is every single time when we have a lot of volume or we're scaling, she can just boom, hire a new person, train them in like within 24 hours and get them to work. You know, when we're scaling, let's say to like a million a month or something, you know, which obviously going to happen within a month again. I know it's going to happen. I'm used to it at this point. What's going to happen is that this person is, uh, what's going to happen with the company is we're going to hire like 10 or 15 people again for the back end. You know, N now we don't need some anymore because obviously we had some downtime, but um, yeah. The general store is the thing that I was like, should I still run it? I don't really feel like running it anymore, but I think it's kind of cool if I do it as well for the vlogs here and I show you guys 
that I can just spin up new stores and new countries and just show you how easy it is to actually make money with this business model. And so you know, the six stores that we're gonna run, one is UK, Italy, France, Netherlands, Belgium. We're gonna open a store in Australia and New Zealand. Now, let's see how they will go. I'm very curious to see it. Um, it's gonna be interesting. Keep watching. Anyway, besides that, I'm gonna eat some food I ordered everyday healthy as you know chicken and rice i don't know what kind of stuff it is some salad and we have here uh, avocado toast regulatory approval the rate we should get back regulatory approvals uh so bro how the fuck do you even know this kind of for the research methods and then i get in shock and then you show me i'm like bro what the fuck let me try this you know <laughs> and we base that off like how good are the products running stuff like that i have a tool guys called dnote d n o t e no paid promotion, nothing. They're totally free. It's just a Chrome extension. And it can show you exactly how much ad spend you have, uh, like your competitor has on each uh, advertisement in Facebook. Because Facebook since last year... Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? I've been awake since 6 a.m. And I've basically just been working a lot. We've been doing a lot of stuff. You can see probably my eyes. I'm pretty tired. It's just that way you have a lot of responsibilities in your company and you deal with a lot of shit at the same time. Sometimes it can be a little bit hard and challenging. Now for me, I do like this. I wouldn't really be doing anything else in my life, to be honest. So uh, for me, it is all fine because uh, what we're gonna be doing is besides just advertising on Meta with our stores, we're gonna be as well be active on Google. So I'm exploring that right now. There's a huge opportunity with Google Ads as well right now, where you have a bunch of fashion stores in several countries in uh, worldwide actually and we're going to be opening a lot of stores and just using google as well as a platform to sell as well our our products right because we know and have a lot of products that we know we could sell with google as well they would go amazing anyway i'm gonna now uh go a little bit outside go for like a 30 minute walk clear my head a little bit and then actually i'm gonna have a meeting with um emmanuel which is a gentleman here from dubai and he knows a lot about the real estate he's gonna help me a bit of the real estate here in Dubai. I'm interested in buying, I don't know, maybe one or two units. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to see what's possible out there. And he's going to be explaining to me what are good opportunities right now. I will take you guys one here because real estate in Dubai is very, very interesting. You guys know I'm a big fan of making cash flow and profits and investing them in like long term opportunities that I don't really have to look at all the time. So what I have in my mind kind of right now is that I would like to buy something here in Dubai and then rent it out directly. While the house and real estate is getting more value, like in years and years, gonna be increasing. Always, I also want to rent it out so I can make as well some cash flow. Having a plan B as an entrepreneur is not always possible, but I really believe in long-term investments. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Emmanuel. So please introduce yourself, man. Uh, my name is Emmanuel. I am a senior broker at Axe Capital. And I am here giving uh, Farouk some advice on yeah. where to pick some assets. Yeah, we're gonna buy some real estate. <laughs> so now like we've been looking at some places. So, so like what kind of place do you recommend for me actually? Okay, so basically the idea when you're purchasing is typically to focus on a great location, yes. But what makes a great location? Uh, usually, historically, a lot of places are considered great locations when they are located by the sea. So that's very great. Uh, another way you can think of a great location is where specific government infrastructure is coming into town. So when you see the government uh, stating that they're going to create the largest airport in the world, that place becomes a prime location in a couple of years. Oh yeah. It will not become a prime location overnight, but over the decade, a lot of economic activity will surround that place. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now I'm giving Farouk some information about the new project which is coming up, which is yeah. a golf course community. Oh. And hopefully, since he likes to play golf as well, play some golf bro yes <laughs> yeah, then bro. you'll be able to understand why the project right now is very very low in price and offers uh, Farouk a very high capital appreciation let's see bro it's gonna be amazing <laughs> so we're gonna look at some real estate in the Dubai Hills mall around that place now brother why are we going to exactly like this but why do you recommend this spot uh, I would like to show you an example of a real matured community yeah uh, this community has uh, not only of course the typical apartments and villas and townhouses but it also have has wonderful commercial infrastructures like parks golf courses malls uh, hospital schools so this is what we mean when we say a community is compact and it has everything you need you don't really have to go yeah. out. Uh, so now we're going to see the park 
I also want to run you through how just how large the park is, as well as the golf course. Mm. And then you will see them from both sides. This is not far away from the airport. It's about approximately 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, this is an example as we're going to the central park now, but this is an example of villas which are ready and townhouses on the on the right side. Ah, they're making villas here. Correct. So you can see how family oriented this place is. Yeah. Yeah. So if your your clients are trying to rent it out in the future, that would be spectacular as well. So these are villas under construction. Mm -hmm. So these will do very well. They've already been sold out completely. They're sold out already. Oh, they're sold out already. They were sold out at launch. Oh shit! Goes quick here. That will that goes very quick. That was sold yeah. for around twenty two million each villa. Twenty two million. In dirhams. This is yes. This is the address villas is branded. Ladies and gentlemen, I just got home. As you can see, like my energy is quite draining at, at this point. When sometimes a lot of things are going bad in business, I like to put I put myself more into maybe more stress, maybe you can say, and test myself out more. Even in this situation, where I'm like working hard all day, trying to eat as less as possible. Not only because fasting is good, but also because I only wanna I see food more these these times a reward, right? If I haven't done shit, I'm just lazy, sitting, whatever. I don't just I just don't wanna like randomly order food because. Uh, you have to understand back in the days when we were like more in our primal state as well like actually eating right it was so hard you gotta hunt for food right and kill an animal fight against this lion against that whatever or fish <laughs> and then try to get some food as you can see i'm quite tired that's because uh, i normally sleep around like 11 pm these days and now my boys they called me father come to top golf i came and dressed as you can see dressed in press golfing you know hey, who's there who's there oh says the i bro you're good what do we have here i do bro sharing with the vlog bro i do bro you good Brother, welcome back to Dubai. Thanks, bro. Looking fresh. You bought a new watch, yeah? Yeah, I just got this like, an hour ago. So what is that? What kind of AP, right? It's a... Uh, it's a panda. Where's the nice Bro, it's grinding, bro. Alright, so anyway. It's a panda. It's discontinued 2017. Just bought it. Oh, shit. Pretty cool. That was crazy. It was super impulsive as well. I wasn't planning on buying it. Bro, but you just bought another AP like a week ago or something. Yeah, I know. I got the jumbo. My district has too much drillers. Like who wants them? Like who wants war with Sydney's drillers? They talk that talk on gas, but them boys, they ain't got no triggers. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back home. I was like there at the bar on the way to the lobby at Top Golf, and suddenly I hear this guy, he screams to me. He says, like, Eco Legend. And I'm like walking like this. I look at him like, hey, yo, nice to meet you. Then like we talk, talk and stuff. It's always fun when I'm just walking, chilling around and some guy, he recognized me and I asked him like, yo, where do you know me from? He says like, bro, I never knew a lot about Ecom. He saw one of my IG reels and then he went to my YouTube channel and he learned a lot. And he's actually going to open his first store as well. And this is the type of shit why I love this game so much and why I post so much more. Just like inspire everybody, close the gap of between thinking it is not possible to have a successful e-com business because if you look from what place I come from from having only around like two grand on my bank account to living all the way here I just literally show that this shit is really possible bro really like this makes me so happy I had a great conversation with him told him as well like yo bro just DM me if you have any questions I uh, always like to talk with people you know anyway it was quite uh, today was quite a stressful day I'm not gonna lie guys Besides all this fun that you see online, um, we saw it earlier in the videos, like a bunch of stuff in the business is going wrong actually, you know, uh, in all honesty. We're trying to launch many ads on Facebook, they get rejected. I even put out a tweet asking if somebody knows a fix. We don't know why this is happening. Um, so yeah, we're trying to fix that. I can't even properly launch products a lot on, on Facebook right now, but uh, we'll get there, we'll fix this shit. <laughs> Good morning, you squirrels, motherfuckers. Guess what? I just came from. Actually, I wanted to go gymming. Uh, I went like downstairs. It was all fucking full. I wanted to train my chest. All the things were full. I couldn't sit there. I was like, bro, fuck this shit. I'm gonna go get back to my morning run. 
here I am. Look, we've been quite like getting better and better, more and more fit, as you can see. And uh, I wanted to talk about something actually that has been on my mind for a while right now. Why? Yeah, do a lot of people think that rappers are more interesting than dropshippers? Listen, bro, when I was a young kid, I was going to school even like as well while delivering my pizzas. I was listening to all these rappers. They talk about bitches, weed, wearing a Rolex. They just like don't, don't, don't buy a day just by the way. And all this shit about that they do business or some good deals. Meanwhile, they're all getting screwed by music labels. And they only get 5% of what they're really making. <laughs> so, so, in the end, who's the real schemer? Is that you or the record label? That's why there's a lot of people, they are complaining and trying to leave their label. And a lot of them, when they leave the label, they're like, oh shit, now I have to actually work. And then all of them fail. That is why, if you look at people like us, like not to brag, obviously, but in all honesty, even outside of money, right? If you're going to look... What we as econ guys and dropshippers are actually showcasing to people, how we're living, uh, the way we try to inspire other people. The fuck are rappers doing? Why do you idolize rappers? What kind of bullshit is this? I don't get it. And then you look at me, right, the way I'm living, or the other successful dropshippers. I'm just one of them, by the way. Uh, I try to do my best every day. It's like, why the fuck even follow rappers? Have you ever seen a podcast? Have you ever seen in your life a podcast, right? With a rapper outside of Jay-Z, of course. And because he's a businessman and, a, or, and, and let me ask you this. Have you ever seen in your life a podcast between a rapper and a guy like in a podcast? Bro, they asked the rapper something. The only thing that comes out of the mouth of rappers is like rrr, 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 rrr. They try to make this like a rap song or something It's all bullshit and crap Nothing serious comes out of it Like for real, right? You listen to my podcast, you hear Health, What Love, Happiness and Status I mean <laughs> I'm trying to subtle flex but uh, you know what I mean <laughs> So it's never something useful that you can actually use as actionable advice Because what is the point of talking about the topic? Just so you can a little bit understand it. You need actionable advice to build your life, so you can, so you can, so you can make your life better, right? That is the most important part. How do you make your life better by executing the shit you learn somewhere else? That's why from these podcasts, as well, I started giving like more value and showing what my company is actually doing, right? So, anyway, I'm gonna get a shower and then I'm gonna work. I have a bunch of calls today. Right now, I was thinking. Ja, alles zijn een riefje. Bro, Ari, luister even één seconde naar mij. Bro, doe eens even gewoon een van die campagnes. Ja. En stuur het naar een random blog. Uh, so, uh, how do you say? So, why are you driving the car that we bought for our father? Bro, go drive your own car. <laughs> the fuck oh, is this? I don't like those nice cars. So we take them over again. But guys, but guys, I'm gonna tell you guys a pain in the ass that we actually have right now. Yeah, with the React ads. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. How do you say? Like, I fucking told them, bro. It's a, it's a pain in the ass. Yes. So Priscilla, this is called white labeling. It is still drop shipping, but they just have their own custom packaging, or they put, for example, one of their logos on the products, and it did this also very cheap to do. But you don't need to do that, to be honest. Ladies and gentlemen, we just had a group call, as you can see with our students. They always ask so many nice questions. Um, we do like seven times a week, like these group calls in our coaching program. It's been a very, very long day. Right now, look, it's like almost 11 p.m. I'm so tired. I'm going to wake up again tomorrow at like 5.30 or something. There's a lot of shit that we have to do. But ladies and gentlemen, just had like a workout, a run, everything, walk. Did my chest, three steps and shit, and now it's time for food. You know, I'm, I ordered the whiteboard because I'm about to make some fucking bangers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's around 9 p.m. right now. Look what I bought today, man. Look, look, look. I bought a new whiteboard, but it's fucking huge. Bro, it took me like two or two hours or something to set this shit up. <laughs> and if it look good, look, it's like a little bit on the side. <laughs> I didn't even put it correctly. Bro, I had no idea how to do this shit, man. Like normally, 
when I need to do this kind of stuff, you know, in my life, bro, I always and always, I just get somebody, maybe my father. I don't understand this shit, bro. What the fuck? But they still managed to install it, bro. I'm not, I'm very bad with my hands. That's why I always sit like one day when I'm older, uh, I need to do this shit later always. I'm just, I gotta hire somebody and let and do this shit as well always for me. But now I didn't have so much time, so I just tried to do it myself. I was curious to see as well how it's gonna go. But uh, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go to Cigar Lounge. One of my friends, they bought like this crazy secret place <laughs> here in Dubai at the Palm. Uh, like a membership or something and uh, we're gonna go smoke a cigar there just chill a bit and work you know so see you guys there they're just literally laughing about me bro what the hell is this <laughs> I lived in that apartment for a year and not once did I sit there. This <laughs> <laughs> guy's capping. Bro, so we're chilling here in the secret room here, the cigar lounge. And they start trolling. You know the thing is guys, I've been telling Z all the fucking time, starts vlogging. Like he lives such an interesting life and he just like doesn't really talk about the show it. Nah, because I, need to. I think I will now. You know, I'm because ordering, the thing, bro, I'm ordering this camera literally. You know, how do you say? Because the thing is, you're just so dialed in work, and you're like, fuck the content shit, right? That's yeah, the only reason. I start doing it. It start like a personal brand. Like, fast forward the next day. So, that's what real life is like. And last night when I went to sleep, I was doing so much work. Right until the minute I like went to bed, and turned my laptop off, went straight to bed. Uh -huh. And I was like, fuck, I just can't wait to wake up to continue working. Bro, but you got so much fun, bro. Faruk, I'm in a situation with my e-commerce stores. I'm doing two or 3K revenue every single day. But the main issue I have, I don't know how to scale harder. Well, if you want to scale harder with your e-com business, there's a few things you can do which are very simple. You can even do today that can even double your revenue in the next 30 days. All right? So... The two main things that we always do in order to double our revenue or make it higher as soon as possible without any crazy like things that we do is one, you need to enter more markets, all right? So we enter more markets. And the reason why I say this, all right, is because if you're selling, let's say in Australia, you have a general or like a fashion store or you name it, and you think like, oh, I'm going to focus only on this country and all the other countries, I will just skip them. That is the most stupid thing I've ever heard. Because from my experience in the last five years and over 20 million revenue that I've done with e -com and especially like mostly with fashion, is that all countries have a momentum, okay? So maybe this month for you, Australia is going to work fine. Maybe this, the other month for you, Denmark is going to work fine. And in order to keep scaling consistently, you need to enter a lot of, and in, order to be, and, and in order to be scaling consistently, you need to enter as many as markets as possible. That is why right now we are running stores in Dutch market, in Denmark, in UK, in Australia, in New Zealand, in Italy, Germany. Bro, you have to, right? Because not all the markets will always perform as good as possible. This is not some crazy magic. Not your stores aren't always going to run like crazy. Even if you're running one brand, you're going to have months where it's like less and better and less. This is the beauty about general stores. You can have like multiple stores and if one of them goes bad, you have the other one which still works amazing. So this is the way we operate. Next things, what you can do is the second thing which is also very important. What most people are forgetting is just testing more products or testing collection pages. So either you're going to test more products, right? Or collection pages, right? Around like 2020, 21, even later as well, I would go into all these spy tools, look at competitors. All these Chinese dropshipping stores, they were all scaling collection pages. I tried it a few times, but it didn't really work and I wouldn't understand why. But now I do understand why. And we have been testing a lot of more of these collection pages and especially as well students in our program. You can see the podcast with Boss. He explains in detail how he scales with collection pages and with, you know, with cost caps. You can see in there as well that these collection pages, if you let them optimize a bit for a few days, they can run like crazy. So collection pages, they go very hard. Those are, they, these are the three very simple things you can do even right now after this, after this. And these are three very simple strategies. You can literally 
pull off after this video. So one, you're gonna enter more markets. Two, you're just going to test more products, right? Because the more you test, the more likely you will get a winner. And three, collection pages. Do this shit right now. That was it for this vlog. And I do wanna say one thing. The next vlog you're about to see, I'm about to like drop like stupid amount of value. So keep watching as well the next ones. It's only gonna get better from here. And like, believe me guys, I'm really not a content guy. So for me to make even like these videos, talk still on the camera, even after a year of making like content and shit, uh, I gotta get like kind of used to it, man. I'm just so used to just sitting behind the computer, just working uh, almost 24 seven demon mode, but uh, yeah. See you in the next video.